this, it's going to, oh, there we go, it's thinking about it. So what this is doing now is it's comparing all the different data sets, all the 17 reports. Uh, I was demonstrating this to someone a couple of weeks ago and realized that I've got a really, really big data set which I shouldn't do for demonstration purposes. <laughs> There's something like 30,000 rows of data here on, on those 20 different sheets. But the benefit of that is that this is an actual service and information that we're seeing here. So the three elements of this, which I talked about before, service level summary. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I couldn't help but smile when Fliss said about too much data because I feel like that might be where we're at at the moment. So on the service level summary, you've got spider charts showing the difference between a patient's first assessment and their last assessment. Now the last assessment, this isn't broken down by episodes of care or anything at the moment, this is literally the patient journey. So that is something that we've picked up on, that then there isn't really a consistent way that people are breaking down those episodes. So a lot of places will just be um, registering a patient when they enter and then leaving them on the caseload until the patient eventually dies. Some people will be discharging and re-registering, some people will be using individual referrals. If as a user group you can decide what best way to do that in the future, that you always want to use referrals or you want to use a particular recode, then we can look at having the report automatically filtered by that and break it down into the data that this was talking about before. Um, and that, again, is coming back to the conversation about the learning that we need to do. Um, so this is showing the difference between the first and the final assessment. And we can see in the particular service we're looking at, um, at least for these emotional ones, my emotional from there, the psychological symptoms, in general, everyone's improving. Whereas for the physiological, the physical symptoms, there doesn't seem to be that much of a change. Down below, it's giving all the actual values as well, so we can see the pain is going from 1.87 to 1.72, which is an 8% decrease. Um, and then further down in the report, it does this at all the different uh, phases as well. So it's comparing all the stable patients within the time range with the unstable patients, unstable to deteriorating, deteriorating to dying, with a view of giving you the information there in front of you, how people are at different stages. Um, and again, how useful that is will come out as, as more, more use occurs. Um, this is the kind of S bar chart that Fliss showed us for the service. So again, just there, touching the button. What this is showing is um, all patients' most recent questionnaire within the time frame compared to the one before. So it's really it's really dynamic. It's not looking at any particular range like the first or last. It's literally the most up-to-date status of your of, of the service. And we can see that it's veering over to the right more. So people are generally getting better um, as opposed to getting worse. And if you hover over this, you can see the identifiers attached to it as well. I have to zoom out a little bit for this because now my training is I studied maths at university, so I'm a mathematician and just laugh at me. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of this data output because to my mind it's not telling you anything about what's going on in the middle. I I hadn't seen before Fliss's slide about the general trends, which actually makes me feel a lot better about this because it does mean there is some solid evidence behind this. But before that, I just thought this is a, a total change of an amalgamation of indicators. This person in the middle here could be getting way worse in five indicators, way better in a load of other indicators, and it's just coming out of the looking, at the, at the looking like the same. Um, so it's only really telling us about the far left or the far right, but not really about the service as a whole. However, from this aside, it, uh, slide, it does seem that that is the case, so that's, that's reassuring. But off the back of that, we've built a kind of ranking mechanism into this, which is still very much under trial and is not definitive. Um, what it does as it's looking through all your information is showing you, is, is looking at how, how are the people at the moment, how much better could they have got, how much worse could they have got, and how did you perform against that metric? So if everyone in your service stayed roughly the same, you'd be scoring, um, the degree of change would be about 50%. And if people were generally, the same amount of people were getting better, same amount of people were getting worse, you'd be about 50%. More people are getting better, it's higher, less people are getting better, or more people are getting worse. 
it's a really complicated thing. So what we did was amalgamated that into a rank, basically, with C being bang in the middle, D um, and E, the service, the, the patient's generally getting worse, uh, C and the bug people are getting better. So kind of intuitive. Um, and so we can look in this. look into this and see that, in general, this service is performing pretty averagely. Patients are staying about the same. Is that what we expect? Is that not what we expect? <coughs> don't really know at the moment because that's the stage we're at with we're learning how to make side use of iPods on the service. But what we can see is that um, weakness or lack of energy, patients are generally getting worse over time. Um, drowsiness is generally getting worse over time. Friends and family have been anxious and worried, getting worse over time. Weakness, lack of energy, and drowsiness getting worse, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That's probably what you'd expect, depending on your kind of service. Um, friends and family being anxious and worried, probably not so much. You might expect that to be alleviated over time as they um, learn more about the patient and the situation. Again, it depends from service to service, but you can see at a glance how things are going. So say we wanted to look at that weakness of lack of energy and no who those patients are, why is it going on. That's where we get into the full breakdown, and this is where we go into full information overload here. <laughs> We've got about 50 graphs, well, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven graphs, I think it is, for each hypos indicator, showing you the current situation and the change over time. So from top to bottom, this one is the same as one of the graphs that Fliss showed is showing you how patients are changing between the last indicators. So green is they're getting better, grey they're the same, <coughs> grey is they're getting worse, and it's just showing you how much they're getting better or worse at. So if we look at what we're looking at, we're looking at weakness around it. So we can see a lot of people are staying the same, and at a glance, about the same amount, slightly more people are getting worse than they're getting better, and we've got all the numbers there as well. This table underneath says exactly how much people are getting better or worse. So the line across the top, I apologise in advance, I'm realising this is tr turning into a full-on training session, so <laughs> if anyone's falling asleep, just throw something at me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll rebook it. Um, across the top is the original score, so that's their last but one questionnaire, and down the side is their most recent questionnaire, their last questionnaire, and we can see that two people changed from one to four. Two people, the previous but one time we had a questionnaire, were saying that this is one, this is fine, now they've gone down to four. Who are they? Why has that happened? That's what we kind of want to find out. And so that brings us to the next report, which is where we can really drill this down to who the patients are and bring that information out. So we wanted to know people who changed from one to four, and it was weakness. No. Oh, we can talk about this one. Sam, it's your problem again. Yes, it is. <laughs> so from that, you get a list of patients <coughs> that had that there. This should just say two, and then you can <coughs> click on them, and it will. You can use the NHS number to go back into their records, see their full history, but it will also just pre present the information to you there and then as well. So um, these graphs are colour coded by phase of illness. You can see whether people are getting worse through phases. And again, this is down to a single patient level. I'll just go back to this one. There's also a, that pie chart shows where people are currently at. So again, we can see most people are scoring, more than two, uh, three quarters of people are scoring two or above. So you might have to look at that at a service, or is that what you'd expect? Is that normal? And then these last two show the changes over time. So the first assessment, second assessment, third assessment, patients in stable, unstable, deteriorating, dying. Um, Fliss gave some useful feedback on this. Um, what she was talking about when, what she was saying when she was talking about the um, patients coming to the service was basically the um, first assessment thing. You've got all your first assessment information there, but the way we're presenting it isn't probably the most useful for that at the moment. We're focused more on the outcomes and how people are changing over time and how you can take that back to, to your service to, to get things out there. Another piece of feedback she gave was that the stable, uh, the phase of illness graph should probably be a bar chart because 
simply being a, a linear graph seems in, uh, implies that there's a journey there whereas we know patients can move in and out of all of them. So we'll be taking that feedback um, back. Oh, and someone asked a question about what this meant when she was talking about un under 10 patients. This is a great example of that. We've got one dying patient who scored a two. That, if you weren't thinking about this properly, you might just look at this and say, oh, our average patient when they're dying is scoring a two in that indicator. Um, what this was saying is that we should sort of get rid of all those kind of information so there's no room for people to misinterpret data um, because it's pretty much random chance what one person scores. What we want to know about is trends over, over groups. Are there any questions about the graphs at that point and the other functionality? I think for, from a nerd's perspective, um, but the usability from the front end user, the simplicity of it, mm. uh, and the richness of data that comes from it is, is amazing. But it's only as good as the first input. So we need to get our, you know, our, our clinicians and you know, recording that information. You'll see that it's, it's really um, data heavy at the beginning then sort of pieces up to them. So you're, you're almost, what are you comparing? You know? yeah. So I think the environment's ready. We need to get better at the front uh, at yeah. how we put the information. And hopefully tools like this will help. So um, I think, I don't know if you've uh, Sam, anything about the clinicians at St. Barnabas, because I, I heard good feedback that seeing, having this, in front of people was really helpful because it turned sheets of questionnaires into... Yeah, the VIP here we use now. 